In linguistics, diglossia refers to a situation in which two dialects or usually closely related languages are used by a single language community. In addition to the community's everyday or vernacular language variety, a second, highly codified variety is used in certain situations such as literature, formal education, or other specific settings, but not used for ordinary conversation. The high variety may be an older stage of the same language, or a distinct yet closely related present-day dialect. Other examples include literary Kathara Vusa versus spoken Demotic Greek, Indonesian, with its Baku and Gaul forms, and the Dravidian language Tamil of southern India and Telugu with their respective high and low registers. Etymology the Greek word ii to the first i cubed i i per mil i florin i florin i i plus or minus normally refers to bilingualism in general, but was first used in the specialized meaning explained by Emmanuel Lloyds in the prologue of his Perigue in 1885. The term was immediately adapted into French as diglossy by the Greek linguist and demoticist Ioannis Sycharis, with credit to Oids. The Arabist William Mara section A's used the term in 1930 to describe the linguistic situation in Arabic-speaking countries. The sociolinguist Charles A. Ferguson introduced the English equivalent diglossia in 1959. Language registers and types of diglossia, in his 1959 article, Charles A. Ferguson defines diglossia as follows, diglossia is a relatively stable language situation in which, in addition to the primary dialects of the language, there is a very divergent, highly codified superposed variety, the vehicle of a large and respected body of written literature either of an earlier period or in another speech community, which is learned largely by formal education and is used for most written and formal spoken purposes but is not used by any section of the community for ordinary conversation. Here, Diglossia is seen as a kind of bilingualism in a society in which one of the languages has high prestige, and another of the languages has low prestige. In Ferguson's definition, the high and low variants are always closely related. Joshua Fishman expanded the definition of diglossia to include the use of unrelated languages as high and low varieties. For example, in Alsace the Alsatian language serves as in French as Heinz Kloss calls the variant exaglossia and the variant endoglossia. In some cases, the nature of the connection between and is not one of diglossia but a continuum. For example, Jamaican Creole is in standard English as in Jamaica. H is usually the written language whereas is the spoken language. In formal situations, is used. In informal situations, is used. One of the earliest known examples is Latin. Classical Latin being the in vulgar Latin the. The latter, which is almost completely unattested in text, is the tongue from which the Romance languages descended. The variants are not just simplifications or corruptions of the variants. In phonology, for example, dialects are as likely to have phonemes absent from the as vice versa. Some Swiss German dialects have three phonemes, and, in the phonetic space where standard German has only two phonemes, and Jamaican Creole has fewer vowel phonemes than standard English, but it has additional palatal and phonemes. Especially in endoglossia, the form may also be called basilect, the form acrylect, and an intermediate form meselect. Ferguson's classic examples include standard German Swiss German, standard Arabic vernacular Arabics, standard French Creole in Haiti, and Cathara Vusa Dimotiki in Greece. Creole is now recognized as a standard language in Haiti. Swiss German dialects are hardly languages with low prestige in Switzerland. And after the end of the military regime in 1974, Dimotiki was made into Greece's only standard language. Nowadays, Cathara Vusa is no longer used. Harold Shipman writes about Swiss German, it seems to be the case that Swiss German was once consensually agreed to be in a diglossic hierarchy with standard German, but that this consensus is now breaking. There is also common code switching especially in the Arabic world. According to Andrew Freeman this is different from Ferguson's description of diglossia which states that the two forms are in complementary distribution. To a certain extent, there is code switching and overlap in all diglossic societies, even German-speaking Switzerland. 
Examples where the high-low dichotomy is justified in terms of social prestige include Italian dialects as in standard Italian as in Italy and German dialects and standard German in Germany. In Italy and Germany, those speakers who still speak non-standard dialects typically use those dialects in informal situations, especially in the family. In German-speaking Switzerland, on the other hand, Swiss-German dialects are to a certain extent even used in schools and to a larger extent in churches. Ramsay calls German-speaking Switzerland's deglosche a medial deglosche, whereas Felicity Rash prefers functional deglosche. Paradoxically, Swiss-German offers both the best example of deglosche and the worst, because there is no clear-cut hierarchy. Critical deglosche and lifestyle deglosche, a Euro-critical deglosse a Euro-unregistered trademark, a revised notion of deglosher, underpins the state-sponsored ideological dimension of the high and low functional distribution of languages and the attitudes towards languages. In contrast to the language-centric notion of classical deglosher, the revised notion contends that deglosher is primarily a socio-cultural, economic and political phenomenon which is not necessarily accepted as a natural state of affairs by all the minority groups, the speakers of low languages varieties. Critical deglossier not only highlights how language varieties and languages in a particular linguistic market are functionally distributed in formal and informal domains and their linguistic and language capitals are valued as high and low, it also explains why the asymmetrical relationship between the language varieties and languages develops and the role that historical and current political, economic and socio-cultural processes play in its construction. While it draws on the earlier contribution of sociolinguistics of periphery in acknowledging deglosher as imposed from above, it goes further in incorporating the role of agency as proposed in an another revised concept, a Euro lifestyle deglossier Euro unregistered trademark. Lifestyle deglossier contends how and why deglossier can also develop from below in the way in diver do also Euro unregistered trademark everyday socio cultural practices and projection of identities shape their language practices. Alternative lifestyles reflected in these practices are facilitated by the unprecedented nature of the flows of ideas, people, goods and language practices that are associated with the 21st century globalization. This focus on FIOPLI Euro unregistered trademark s everyday practices allows for observing the language choices people make as inextricably linked to their chosen lifestyles. By capturing the micro-level practices. The A Euro lifestyle de Glossier Euro unregistered trademark suggests that people actively project their group affiliations and individuality by drawing on the global flows of lifestyles and local structural arrangements. For example, when German speakers use English, they are doing more than speaking a foreign word. A Euro OE the use of English do us in a Euro unregistered trademark T express some asymmetrical power relationship between German and English nor is it related to class or race or what not. Sure, there are poseurs, but eat a Euro unregistered trademark s stupid to think Germans who can speak the language of cars in English because they race them or the language of music because they consume and or play music are living out some desperate wannabe existence by using and knowing English terms for these things. Eat a Euro unregistered trademark s probably because with the English knowledge of these terms. One can find an even larger pool of interlocutors about a specific subject online or even within Germany itself. These words become native to the speaker of that a Euro O lifestyle de Glossier Euro in ways that those words are not native to the A Euro O E native via Euro to the speakers of the language where these words ostensibly come from a Euro sociolinguistics, as an aspect of study of the relationships between codes and social structure. Deglosha is an important concept in the field of sociolinguistics. At the social level, each of the two dialects has certain spheres of social interaction assigned to it and in the assigned spheres it is the only socially acceptable dialect. At the grammatical level, differences may involve pronunciation, inflection, and or syntax. Differences can range from minor to extreme. In many cases of deglosha, the two dialects are so divergent that they are distinct languages as defined by linguists, they are not mutually intelligible. The dialect which is the original mother tongue is almost always of low prestige. Its spheres of use involve informal, interpersonal communication, conversation in the home, among friends, in marketplaces. In some deglossiers, 
this vernacular dialect is virtually unwritten. Those who try to give it a literature may be severely criticized or even persecuted. The other dialect is held in high esteem and is devoted to written communication and formal spoken communication, such as university instruction, primary education, sermons, and speeches by government officials. It is usually not possible to acquire proficiency in the formal, high dialect without formal study of it. Thus in those diglossic societies which are also characterized by extreme inequality of social classes, most people are not proficient in speaking the high dialect, and if the high dialect is grammatically different enough, as in the case of Arabic diglossia, then these uneducated classes cannot understand most of the public speeches they might hear on television and radio. The high prestige dialect tends to be the more formalized, and its forms and vocabulary often filter down into the vernacular, though often in a changed form. In many diglossic areas there is controversy and polarization of opinions of native speakers regarding the relationship between the two dialects and their respective statuses. In cases where the high dialect is objectively not intelligible to those exposed only to the vernacular, some people insist that the two dialects are nevertheless a common language. The pioneering scholar of Diglosha, Charles A. Ferguson, observed that native speakers proficient in the high prestige dialect will commonly try to avoid using the vernacular dialect with foreigners and may even deny its existence, even though the vernacular is the only socially appropriate one for themselves to use when speaking to their relatives and friends. Yet another common attitude is that the low dialect are Euro which is everyone's native language Euro Euro ought to be abandoned in favor of the high dialect, which presently is nobody's native language. See also, List of diglossic regions, Artbore Sprache, Abstand Sprache, Dag Sprache, Bilingualism, Dialect Continuum, Diagraphia, Pluricentric Language, Register, Sociolinguistics, Standard Language, Linguistic Insecurity, Mixed Language, Notes. References. Further reading: Bastardus Boda, Albert. 1997. Context A Repre Copyright Sentations Dans Lake Contacts Linguistiques Par da Copyright Cision Politique Substitution versus de Glossy Dans La Perspective de la Plana Copyright Terrorization, Die Visite Copyright Langs. Aiden, Tuus Van. De Glossy HTTP www Afrikaans New Pag 7 htm Lublina, Jacob. Reflections on Diglosha HTTP, www say Berkeley Edu says Ref Digle htm, external links, Diglosha, Group Europa Copyright Ender Recherches en Langs Cra Copyright Oles, Diglosha as a Sociolinguistic Situation, Harold F. Schiffman, University of Pennsylvania, 2, in the New German, English is AA Euro Lifestyle de Glossier Euro, Ashley Passmore.